Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Cooper Stuff. This is going to be a short episode. I've got a sweet, important announcement about something that we're doing. Before I, uh, I say that, I want to read a uh, comment that we had from my podcast just from this week. This is totally, by the way, completely random, but, but somebody sent me a comment. Uh, her name is Shauna Swan. She says, so Shauna, if you're watching, I'll tell your comment. I liked it. She says, the amount of people standing firm is not diminishing. It's increasing. I'm seeing it everywhere, she says. That's in response to my last podcast, which I called Standing in the Storm. My, my point of, of that being, it's kind of weird. We're seeing a lot of people fall away. It's getting harder to you know, stand in this and the other. I like this point that she's making because um, I, I kind of tried to, to say it. I probably didn't say it all that clearly. I agree with her, by the way. And I think she's responding because I said in the podcast that it, the amount of people being willing to stand firm is, is diminishing. What I was trying to say was what I'm excited about is seeing a rise of the layperson. And I think we are seeing that. That is when I, and, and again, when I say layperson, what I'm talking about is, is the normies. It's all of us normies. This isn't pastors um, necessarily. When I say in, like platform pastors, this isn't your big evil leaders. All right. So in other words, uh, these are just people that go to church. They love God. Um, maybe they lead a home group um, or like a small group, whatever you prefer to call it. A Sunday school class, whatever. They're the people that work five days a week as plumbers and teachers and businessmen or whatever, but they love God, right? And they are they are living out in their families and in their church communities the true faith and they are rising up and they have had enough of apostasy. They've had enough of like the deconstruction movement that is trying to sort of uh, diminish the authority of scripture. Um, they've had enough of people come on and say, well, if you really think about the Bible, this they're starting to see through what's happening and they are not going to be putting up with it. I agree with uh, what I think the, this person, Shauna, says. I'm seeing that too. I am seeing the rise of the lay person. It is the normies. They're not the Bible scholars. They're not the people who went to Bible college. They are the normal, average, ordinary lovers of God. And this is exciting. And not only do I love to see it, I encourage it. If that's you, it needs to happen. If you're one of those people that I know you have, because I've seen thousands of comments on Cooper stuff, people saying, I'm starting to hear my pastor say some kind of strange stuff too. I haven't maybe understood all the language. I hear that a lot on Co on your comments. I say, I was watching Cooper stuff. Thanks for explaining the language because I've noticed my pastor's language changing into this and I'm concerned. I say, good. I don't say, hate your pastor. Go talk to your pastor. Set up a meeting. Find out what he means when he uses these, these terms. Are you saying this and this and this? Rise of the lay people is a wonderful, wonderful thing. On the flip side, and I tried to say this today, I may not have done a good job. I'm saying there are two things happening at once. The rise of the lay person, I am seeing it. Go for it. I love it. The other thing that I'm seeing is a lot of voices in the public sphere. Sometimes I call them the Christian elites. I don't know what you want to call them, right? Our Christian culture elites. I called them Big Eva the other day. Some people call them Big Eva for big evangelicalism. These are going to be your elite uh, type people. They are thought leaders. They are the intellectuals. They a lot of times are the theologians and they write these long think pieces and they say Bible truths and, and some of exegesis, but they do it in a cultural way, right? Some of these big evil leaders are really, really going, going off the deep end. So here's the thing. That's what I'm talking about diminishing. Now, what am I announcing today? This is very important. We're about to do something in Cooper stuff that I think is going to be hugely, hugely important. One of the biggest things we've done, most important things we've done. I have not recorded these episodes yet, so I can't guarantee it, but I think this is really big. I just decided this morning, because because all of a sudden I had all these various things I need to talk about. They all, they're all hitting at once. And I thought, here's what I need to do. I need to do a series. I don't know how many parts it's going to be. It's going to be at least three parts. I need to do a series beginning next week, Lord willing. And I want to title the series something like, there'll be part one, and it will be something like the leftward drift of Big Eva leaders or the leftward drift of the Christian elite. I don't know what it's going to be called. Here's why. Here's what I think is happening. The Christian elite, Big Eva leaders, whatever you want to call them, 
I think that they ha have begun to be motivated by political leftism. Now, I'm not saying they know that, and I'm not trying to, to, to be harshly judgmental towards them. I'm not saying they are not saved. I'm not saying that we're not brothers. I don't want to burn them all down, but it has to be talked about. I do not think that what is happening is that these elite, these elite leaders and, and the smart people, the intellectual, I don't think what's happening is that they are reading their Bible and they are, they are getting deeper in the scriptures and going, oh, how can we live more like Christ? What can I do to, make, uh, to help the church rise up in truth and in unity? And, and it just happens to look like political leftism. I don't think that's what's happening. In other words, I do not think it is Bible theology that is shifting them from what a lot of us would consider sometimes core tenets of the faith, to be honest. Sometimes it's core tenets of the faith, which is a huge problem. And some of those Christian big evil leaders really have done that. You know I'm not going to burn somebody down about things that we can disagree on. As I always say, eschatology and soteriology. And well, you could see this view being this way and this view being... We're not going to start burning people down over this. Some people are, are drifting away from core tenets of the faith. I don't think it's coming because of theology. I think it's become, coming from the, the, the spirit of the day. All right, That is it's coming from the mood of the, the atmosphere, the cultural mood of what is happening in cult, uh, just in the society, in secularism. I think it is secularism. I think the, the kind of cultural... Uh, attitude of the day that has moved towards humanism, which means basically that we don't need the Bible to fix our problems. I can fix my own problems, right? That's what humanism is. It is saying the human element doesn't need God. Humans can find our own plateau of utopianism. I think that it is that m movement. I think a great way to describe it is what Thomas Sowell calls the vision of the anointed. There are going to be anointed elites that are more evolved, anointed elites that kind of get it more. They get it more than the normies. We all need to put our trust in them because they can lead us into the promised land of utopia, secular atheist utopia. That same spirit of the age, I think, has infiltrated into the Christian Big Eva elites. I think that our Big Eva elites also believe in the vision of the anointed, and I think that that. When I read their articles, it smells like they think they are the anointed. They are the elites that are going to lead us. Put our trust in them. And it just happens to be that their vision of, of, of the church, their vision of justice, their vision of, of Christianity, just happens to align nearly perfectly with the atheist utopian movement. Kind of weird, right? That's what I see happening. So we are going to begin to do a probably three-part, maybe four-part, not to burn down people. To I'm going to read their words. I'm going to bring in other people. We are going to discuss that so that you guys will see why our trust in these people, as they, they, let's see, they are diminishing in terms of standing firm. They are diminishing, so therefore our trust in them needs to diminish. We need a rise of the lay people. And I say that because a lot of people, you're just like I was. You want to, you want to, trust, you want to trust these big Eva elites. You, you think, they're not diabolical probably. Why, do they, why would they want to lead me astray? They wouldn't do that. Or you think exactly like I always think. They're really, really intelligent. There's no way I could ever be as intelligent as them. Who am I to argue with these people. They just wrote these papers. I can ba barely understand the words there. I have to use a dictionary just to read their papers. So who am I to argue? Maybe this is where Christianity just needs to go. That's why it's so important we do this because that's not actually true. We need a rise of the lay people. We're going to start part one on Monday, and this is the reason all these things have converged at one time. We are seeing a plethora of of articles from David French coming out, who is a Christian conservative commentator on the Dispatch, a sort of intellectualist that, that has been, in my view, drifting leftward for several years. There is that group of people. There's an article that came out just this past week in the New York Times that we have to talk about. I'm not talking about today because I just don't have time. All this has come out within the last two weeks. A New York Times article is basically saying there is a new group of 
reconstruction reconstructionist Christians, almost like a new reform, uh, a new reformation type thing happening that are trying to save evangelicalism from itself. It just so happens that this group of leaders would be all people. They mentioned David French, uh, um, Beth Moore, um, lots of other people, lots of other people that I would be like, that I would consider actually not in even within Christianity any law. I would say that's progressive Christianity. I would say that I, I would say that they are outside of the faith at this point. They have redefined biblical marriage, uh, sexuality, gender. Some of them do no, no longer believe in hell. And that means so therefore they don't really believe in the atonement. This is dangerous stuff. Well, they've lumped a lot of these people together saying that they are saving Christianity for themselves. So we have to talk about the article. At the same time, there was an amazing article that came out on the Daily Wire. If you don't subscribe to Daily Wire, you can't read it. I'm going to read it to you and discuss it by uh, Megan Basham, if I'm saying her name right. I read her articles on the Daily Wire, talking about how the uh, Francis Collins, who is the director of the NIH, who they say apparently is an evangelical Christian, when I've seen his positions on things, I've found that personally hard to believe, but who am I? I don't, I don't judge the souls of men. I just see the fruit and uh, his positions on things like abortion and, and uh, sexuality and this and the other. I kind of find it hard to believe, but hey, we're going to get into it later. How Francis Collins went to the big evil leaders, um, such as Tim Keller and people, in order to push the whole, this is what Jesus would do. You have to believe in vax mandates. You have to believe in mask mandates. You have to close down your churches, uh, lockdowns, and this and the other. How that was pushed to the evangelical world through Francis Collins, who is the director of the NIH. This stuff is getting really scary. All these articles are all coming out at one time. And I only do Coopers of twice a week. So here's what we're doing. We're starting this on Monday. I think it's going to be one of the most important things we've ever done. I'm going to try to be gracious but we have to talk about what's happening so that normies like you and me don't read these papers and get intimidated because we're not as smart as them. And I don't understand why that'd be happening because I'm not whatever. No, no. I think it is a, it is a political a worldview, a, left, a leftist um, ideology that they have been sucked into. I believe that they, it is causing their theology to drift left. It's not just that their politics are drifting left. I believe their theology, their, their worldview of ethics is actually drifting left because they were hijacked by this, what I would consider to be a leftist humanist uh, movement. I understand why. It's very popular in society, and you can still be liked by society. If you've noticed, even a lot of the people on the hard left even kind of appreciate a lot of what David French says and Tim Keller and things like that. Gear up, get ready for what we're going to be talking about on Monday. I think you're going to like it and I'm going to get some guests on and we are going to delve into this stuff. So I know this is a short Cooper Stuff podcast. It's more of an announcement. So I hope you guys have a great week. Peace. Cooper Stuff!